We're going to use PID control loop simulation software to demonstrate the difference between a self-regulating process and an integrating process. Here we see on the screen a trend that's actually marching from the left hand to the right. And so what we see right here in the green is the process variable and the white line is the output. We are currently in manual mode and I'm going to give it a, a manual mode step change in the output from 20% up to 30%. When we do that, we're going to see the process variable change as well. There goes the white output line stepping up, and there goes the green process variable line stepping up in a first order lag response. We can see right away this is a self-regulating process. I'll give another step change in the output just to prove. We see one more step change in the output, and here we see another step change in the process variable. Once again, it does so in a first order lag response, kind of like an RC time constant. You can see the process by itself naturally settles into a new process variable value. I'm going to pause the simulation right now and comment on this. So we've made two output step changes, one here from 20 to 30 percent, one here from 30 to 40 percent. In each case, the process variable made a corresponding step change and it settled to a new value. We refer to this as self-regulation. The process is self-regulating in that it's able to achieve a new point of equilibrium without any help from the controller. The controller here is in manual mode, not in automatic. So the fact the process variable leveled out <coughs> is not due to any corrective action on the controller's part. All we did with the controller is simply gave it a manual mode step change and we're letting the process naturally behave as it would on its own with no automatic control action whatsoever. The question then becomes, what tuning parameters should we use in our controller to yield good control from this process? Well, being that it's a self-regulating process, the process itself requires a new valve position for every new process variable value that we wish to achieve. And we can see this very clearly on the trend through our open loop step changes. In order to get the process variable to some new value, we require a novel valve position. There's really only one control action that can possibly do this, and that is integral action. Only integral action is able to generate brand new valve positions to get us to brand new set point values. If I look at my tuning parameters here, the default tuning parameters, a gain of one, zero repeats per minute for integral, and zero, re, uh, zero minutes for derivative. What I'm gonna do is keep the gain at one, and I'm going to change this to one repeat per minute on my integral. I'll enter that value, I'll switch the controller into automatic mode. Now, the controller is actually going to take action if it sees an error develop between process variable and set point. When I made the change to automatic mode, we see the set point value in yellow jump up right here. It basically, it, it uh, went through the set point tracking feature uh, when we came out of manual mode into automatic, it forced the set point to equal the process variable. So right now, PV and set point are equal, zero error, and we're holding in a steady state condition. I'm going to now take my set point and change it to 40% from 30, and we'll see the response. Uh, here what we see is the output took an immediate step up, the flow in green took an immediate step up as well. It didn't quite reach set point, and now we're slowly rising to set point. This rise you see right here is due to integral action winding up the valve right here. I want to pause it for a moment and take a look at the response. Notice how the process variable value right around here jumped up and then immediately came back. It kind of wobbled a little bit before it went up to the new set point value. We have a colloquial term for this effect and that's called porpoising, when the process variable value kind of oscillates before it ever reaches the new set point. Porpoising can only happen from two types of controller action, excessive proportional or excessive derivative. It cannot ever happen as a result of integral. Here's why. In order for the process variable value to porpoise, it has to go up, then reverse direction, then reverse direction again on its way to set point. Integral action will never ever do that because so long as we're always below set point, integral always keeps driving in the same direction. It will never reverse action. It will never reverse direction. Proportional, on the other hand, if it sees the PV value rise, it's going to immediately drop the output. In fact, we see that right here, a spike in the white line followed by a drop due to proportional action as the PV begins to rise rapidly. So too much gain 
will cause reversal in valve direction sufficient enough to cause a wobble in the process variable value before it reaches set point. Derivative can also do the same thing. Looking at rates of change, if we had derivative programmed in here, it is possible for it to do porpoising as well. It would see a rise in the process variable and it would try to correct that immediately by reversing the valve direction and possibly causing porpoising. But since in this application we know we have no derivative action, we only have proportional and integral, and we know of those two, the only one that can possibly cause this porpoising is proportional. We know we got too much of that. So I'm going to go over here and change my gain from a gain of 1 down to a gain of 1 half. Now I can see already that my integral action is not strong enough. I'm taking a long, long time to build up to set point, so I'm going to uh, plug in a more aggressive integral. I'm going to go with 4 repeats per minute. This is repeats per minute, not minutes per repeat, so a bigger number means more aggressive. I'll resume the simulation and see what happens. I'll let it reach set point, then I'll give it another set point change down to 30%. Let's see the response. Set point down to 30. You can see we took an immediate step with proportional action. No porpoising, no oscillation. That's because we turned our gain down. And we're still uh, settling into set point, but it could go much, much faster. So I'm going to crank up my integral even more. I'm going to go 10 repeats per minute and change my set point back at 40%. percent we will see what happens. There we go. Set point steps up to 40%. You can see the valve step immediately, and the process variable has a much, much faster approach to set point. We're still not overshooting, so I think we can go even more aggressive on our integral. I'm going to go to 15 repeats per minute. I'll step down to 30% on the set point, and we'll watch the response. Set point steps down. Wow, look at this. Process variable value very, very quickly reaches the new set point. You can see how well this fast-acting, self-regulating process responds to integral control action from the controller. But we're still not overshooting, no oscillation, so I think we can go even more aggressive on the integral. So I'm going to go 20 repeats per minute. I'll jump the set point back up to 40% to watch the response. There we go, set point jumps up to 40%, process variable very rapidly rises up, little bit of overshoot, and then settles at set point. At this point, it would be worthwhile to ask the operations personnel what they would prefer. Would they like this fast response to set point, and can they tolerate some overshoot? Or on the other hand, maybe they cannot tolerate overshoot, and they're willing to put up with a slower approach to set point. At this point, we would have to talk to basically our customers, the people who run this loop, and see what response they would prefer. But in general terms, we can see self-regulating process requires integral action to achieve new set points. And in the case of a fast-acting self-regulating process, the integral time constant, uh, the integral action can be rather aggressive and gives us good response.